when one of SeaWorld's most famous whales died in five years ago in 2017, the park alleged that a lung-related illness had claimed her life. When images of the orca's sores were made public, some people became suspicious. Statements about the animal dying because it had been injured on stage or lived in a subpar environment surfaced and worsened the situation. Before we begin, make sure you smash that like button, subscribe to our channel, and click the notification bell for more amazing videos. The female orca was captured when she was born in 1976 in the sea near Iceland. She is named Kasaka, and her pod mate Katina was also captured as well. The pair of orca were soon sold to Sea World, as one might expect. It was after four years in San Diego with Katina that Orco was transferred to Orlando. Kasaka starred in the famous Shamu show at Sea World. An all-day performance schedule ensured her days were busy, but she made sure to fit in as many recitals as possible. However, although the people loved her, Kasaka was not always a friendly character at the park. Make sure you have subscribed to our channel eMystery to get notifications about new more inspiration videos. Now, back to the story. In fact, the whale was sometimes aggressive towards humans and in separate incidents in 1993 and 1999, she attempted to bite her trainer, Ken Peters. Things came to a head in November 2006 when Kasatka violently dragged Peters underwater. Eventually, Peters was able to break free of Kasatka's mouth and escape the tank. Somehow, the ordeal left him only with minor injuries. However, a clip of the incident later appeared in Blackfish, a 2013 documentary that claims to highlight the negative and dangerous effects captivity can have on killer whales. But even following the attack on Peters, Kasatka continued to appear in Shamu performances, and her starring role in the show wasn't the only way she was valuable to see world. In fact, she was also the San Diego Pod's matriarch, having born four children later, leading to six grandchildren and two great-grandchildren. Kasatka delivered her final child, a male named Makani in February 2013. However, his birth proved controversial due to a problem with his mom's lungs discovered by vets in 2008. Since then, she had relied on an inhaler to pump medicine into her respiratory system. According to some, this may have made her unfit to carry and deliver another baby. However, SeaWorld went ahead with the artificial insemination Kasaka. Former SeaWorld trainer John Hargrove later questioned the Aquapark's decision to make the orca go through a gestation period of around 18 months, and he also worried Kasaka could pass the medication in her system onto Makani during nursing. Following the birth of Makani, Kasaka's condition deteriorated. Consequently, in August 2016, SeaWorld announced the whale was having trouble battling her illness. The park blamed her decline on her age and ailing immune system. However, this excuse didn't convince many of the organization's critics. SeaWorld of Hurt is a branch of the animal welfare group PETA that campaigns exclusively against SeaWorld. In a statement from August 2017, they pointed out that orcas can live over 100 years in the wild. Meanwhile, Kasaka's was just 40. However, by other estimates, Kasaka lived to a ripe old age. According to the Born Free Foundation, the majority of SeaWorld's captive orcas do not last longer than 25 years. Furthermore, only one has ever survived to the age of 41.6. Following SeaWorld's update on Kasaka in June 2017, photos emerged of the orca looking unwell. A park visitor called Elizabeth captured the shocking images, which showed the whale as she lined up for her medication. In an interview, Elizabeth revealed the worrying story behind the pictures. When Kasaka lifted her head out of the water, her lower jaw looked completely disfigured. She told the Dolphin Project. She appeared extremely lethargic and did not swim around the pool as she normally would. When a trainer asked her to do a behavior for the crowd, she did a pathetic attempt at a spy hop. She seemed barely able to get her head out of the water. Elizabeth added, when the trainers were through, they dismissed the group of orcas, and they all left except for Kasaka, who moved only a few feet from the wall 
and stayed logging in the same spot until I left. In Elizabeth's images, it appeared Kasaka was sporting a number of lesions on her jaw. According to Hargrove, these were a clear sign of a huge fungal infection. In fact, he revealed that SeaWorld gives its orcas large doses of antibiotics to keep them healthy, and this in turn had likely weakened Kasaka immune system. Sadly, when I look at this photo, all I see is a diseased whale, Hargrove said. Historically, when a necropsy is performed on an animal with this level of fungal infection, the fungal lesions are far worse internally than they are externally. It is also an incredibly painful way to die. Unfortunately, Kasaka passed away in, in August 2017, one month after the shocking photos emerged. In the end, vets put her to sleep as her battle with her illness intensified. However, the park made no reference to the orca's skin sores when it announced her death online. Kasaka passed away at approximately 8.15 p.m. surrounded by members of her pod, as well as the veterinarians and caretakers who loved her, a statement from SeaWorld. All of us at SeaWorld are deeply saddened by this loss, but thankful for the joy she has brought us and more than 125 million park guests. However, SeaWorld's emotional statement didn't wash with Hargrove. She suffered unbearably so that kids could watch her do tricks and SeaWorld could get richer, he told the Daily Mail in August 2017. Now she's dead, my only comfort in her death is she is no longer being exploited. Finally, she is at peace. But SeaWorld contested Hargrove's accusations. These allegations are the same distortions and mischaracterizations that have been made and discredited over the years," the park said in a statement. When it comes to caring for these beautiful creatures, no one knows the animals better than our vets and animal care staff. They are dedicated to the health well-being of all of our killer whales. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up and consider sharing it with your friends and family. Thanks again, and we'll see you in the next one.